How Benjamin Franklin Conquered Worry. A letter from Benjamin Franklin to Joseph Priestley, the latter invited to become librarian for the Earl of Shelburne, asked Franklin's advice. Franklin, in his letter, states his method of solving problems without worrying. London, September 19th of 1772. Dear Sir, in the affair of so much importance to you, wherein you ask my advice, I cannot, for want of sufficient premise, advise you what to determine, but if you please, I will tell you how, when these difficult cases occur. They are difficult chiefly because while we have them under consideration, all the reasons pro and con are not present to the mind at the same time but sometimes one set presents themselves and at other times another the first being out of sight hence the various purposes or inclinations that alternately prevail and the uncertainty that perplexes us to get over this my way is to divide half a sheet of paper by a line into two columns, writing over the one pro and over the other con. Then during three or four days consideration, I put down under the different heads, short hints of the different motives that at different times occur to me for or against the measure. When I have thus got them all together in one view, I endeavor to estimate their respective weights, and where I find two, one on each side, that seem equal, I strike them both out. If I find a reason pro equal to two, some two reasons con, I strike out the three. If I judge some two reasons con equal to some three reasons pro, I strike out the five. And thus proceeding, I find at length where the balance lies. And if after a day or two of further consideration, nothing new that is of importance occurs on either side, I come to a determination accordingly. And though the weight of reasons cannot be taken with the precision of algebraic qualities, yet when each is thus considered separately and comparatively, and the whole lies before me. I think I can judge better, <clears throat> excuse me, and am less likely to make a rash step. In fact, I, I have found great advantage from this kind of equation in what may be called moral or prudential algebra. Excuse me. Wishing sincerely that you may determine for the best, I am ever, my dear friend, yours most affectionately. Ben Franklin. And another one. I was so worried I didn't eat a bite of solid food for 18 days. By Catherine Holcomb Farmer. Deputy Sheriff, Sheriff's Office, Mobile, Alabama. Three months ago, I was so worried that I didn't sleep for four days and nights. And I did not eat a bite of solid food for 18 days. Even the smell of food made me violently sick. I couldn't find words to describe the mental anguish that I endured. I wonder whether hell has any worse tortures than what I went through. I felt as if I would go insane or die. I knew that I couldn't possibly continue living as I was. The turning point of my life was the day I was given an, advi an advanced copy of this book. During the last three months, I have practically lived with this book, studying every page, desperately trying to find a new way of life. The change that has occurred in my mental outlook and emotional stability is almost unbelievable. I am now able to endure the battles of each passing day. I now realize that in the past, I was being driven half mad, not by today's problems, but by the bitterness and anxiety over something that had happened yesterday or that I feared might happen tomorrow. But now, when I find myself starting to worry about anything, 
I immediately stop and start to apply some of the principles I learned from studying this book. If I am tempted to tense up over something that must be done today, I get busy and do it immediately and get it off my mind. When I am faced with the kind of problems that used to drive me half crazy, I now calmly sit set about trying to apply the three steps outlined in Chapter 2, Part 1. First, I ask myself, what is the worst that can possibly happen? Second, I try to accept it mentally. Third, I concentrate on the problem and see how I can improve the worst which I am already willing to accept, if I have to. When I find myself worrying about a thing I cannot change and do not want to accept, I stop myself short and repeat this little prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Since reading this book, I am really experiencing a new and glorious way of life. I am no longer destroying my health and happiness by anxiety. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can sleep nine hours a night now. I enjoy my food. A veil has been lifted from me. A door has been opened. I can now see and enjoy the beauty of the world which surrounds me. I thank God for life now and for the privilege of living in such a wonderful world. May I suggest that you also read this book over, keep it by your bed, underscore the parts that apply to your problems, study it, use it. For this is not a reading book in the ordinary sense. It is written as a guidebook to a new way of life. I'm going to stop there and I'll see what else I can get before the sun actually breaks through. I appreciate you listening. This has been a couple of the stories from the final chapter of how to stop worrying and start living. I appreciate you.